welcome back to Badger Lodge Garage. We're back on the Austin again. If you haven't seen the last two videos, I would suggest you do, because that explains an awful lot. Um, but today we're gonna do what I've been putting off for ages, and that is, uh, that's the brakes. Um, it's, it's just gonna take absolutely ages, to be honest, because I've got to take all the lines out. We're doing everything new, because it's been 30 years, a lot of the lines are crispy and perished. Um, unfortunately, these look really nice. So um, it's a shame to lose them, but they are the original asbestos ones. And then I'd rather not have them on the car, even though they're fairly inert in their current state. Um, it's just for people working on them in the future, we might as well take them off. Overkill, some may say. I don't think it is, um, but it is unfortunate because these are really nice and these are actually the best kind of brakes you can have on one of these. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna take them off. And uh, if you, thank you very much for um, liking and subscribing if you had there's been plenty of you that have come along for seeing what all this is about so thank you very much um, so let's let's crack on with this again right. so these were clearly under adjusted because i just sort of hit the drum off with a hammer it didn't take an awful lot and they just popped off but it is these shoes are brand new as far as it goes they've not even got a leading edge worn on them it is Ridiculous, this must have been serviced before it was parked and had these these shoes put on, but they're the original riveted type. These will be asbestos. Um, and as I say, they're the best, these are the best brakes you have on one of these and they last the longest and they're just, they're just generally really good. Uh, but they are asbestos and I know a lot of people have worked on these for a long time and not have asbestos related illnesses or anything like that. Um, but there is still a risk, so um, what's the point, you know, if we can remove the risk entirely? So uh, we shall pull these drums off, and the good thing about drums is you can take them apart with, you know, a hammer and a pair of pliers. So we'll go and get that and see what we can do. Cool. People get scared of drum brakes, but really, especially these days, you can just take a picture of where all the spring goes and then you, you're all right, really, then. Uh, but this is a very basic form of braking. And we can just pop the springs off. Oh. And then we're uh, good to go. And yeah, and that, that's, that's how you remove brake shoes. One tool, that's quite good. And that's your adjusters. They sit on top of one of them, you've got two of them, and then you can spin the drum around and do an adjust. I did, a, I did a video on that as well, go and have a look. But yeah, as I say, taking them off is literally, that is it. Marvellous, so I'm gonna clean this up, spray it down with some water, rag it off, and then we can start, uh, I'll go and do the other side, but you don't need to see that, and we can start popping off wheel cylinders and things like that and this is all going to be seized on almost guarantee it believe how this is coming undone really. All of these have come undone out of the back of the wheel cylinders. Absolutely mad. The only bit that's needed a bit of heat so far is that. That is quite warm. Right, excellent. Take the wheel cylinders off, and we we'll carry on stripping brake lines up through the up through the engine bay. 
Right, so we're bereft of hydraulics now in the whole front. The wheel cylinders are gone, flexi hoses, metal line. And this is why we've changed the metal line. Look, this just, if you look at it, this is where it just broke off as we we're taking it apart. It's all corroded and gone, so there was no no way we could ever reuse that. Took it out, I've taken all the bits out of this T piece, unfortunately. Um, one of the threads came off with it, so that one's threadless now, so we're gonna need to get a new T piece. So um, that's unfortunate. I thought we might be able to re reuse that, but we cannot. Um, so we're just gonna keep stripping brake lines now. We've got back, we're gonna take the floor up to get the master cylinder out, so that's gonna be fun. Um, there is lots of suggestions about prying the um, torsion bar out of the way to the, get to the, the heads of the bolts, so we'll give that a go. See what we can do, see if we can, uh, see if we can get it apart. Um, yeah, let's take the floor up. So I'm just cracking off, this is one of the lines out of the master cylinder. It's got like a sort of two-way bit on the back. One comes out there, one comes out here. And then we've got two, two nuts to take off and then try and get the bolts out. We've got to try and prise the, um, the torsion bar out of the way and hopefully we can withdraw the bolts and then get the master cylinder out from above. And I'm taking this one off because then we get, this isn't going to get in the way and we can pull it up hopefully out of the way a little bit. Then we can do the back one as we put it in or out or whatever. So, uh, and surprisingly, like everything else on this, it's coming undone. Which is ridiculous. Really? There we go. I love master cylinders on in frame rails. It really makes life so easy. Interesting. That is literally the seal out of the end of the last cylinder. There we go. Oh. That'll go. We just had them there. the fight was not good. After all the front came apart really nicely, to get those two the two bolts they go through the through the middle of this cross member and that was completely one of them just came off and the other one just wouldn't it was just solid so I had to angle grind that off and then leave the torsion bar down to get the other one out of the way and now here we are that wasn't a complete pain at all and now I've got to withdraw this out of here I think I should have cut the line first, would have been easier. How, that's how on standby. Off one or the other. Nice. There we go. And the end is just fallen to bits. That's just it's broken off where it's meant to be attached to the pedal for a start. Look down here. That's just that's full of mud. But yeah. It's meant to be attached to this rod, and it isn't anymore. Uh, add more to the shopping list, thank you, Doke. Yeah. Still amazing that all of these are coming off. Yeah. The convenient thing about having no floor, let's get straight to the T piece, bend everything in. Had to use fire to get that one off, might have accidentally sort of melted the rear loom a little bit, you know, that's just slightly, not quite as it's meant to be, if you see what I mean. So that's gonna have to be chopped out and spliced a bit in, but that's fine, we can do that. That was just idiocy on my part. There we go. Bet this one cracks off as well. And apart from they're all covered in a layer of gunge. Yep, there you go. That 
and cracked off. Other than that master cylinder, this van has been pretty good to us so far. We shall see. Again. Brand new looking shoes. That's ridiculous. I mean, it's great, but it's ridiculous. Drum's pretty good. Yeah. So we've got all the, most of the lines out for the rest of the van now. Uh, strip the rear brakes, and then that's it. That's the whole of the old hydraulic system gone. So then it's time for putting new in, and I'll show talk to you about that in a minute. But um, get these rears off. And then, then we're pretty much there. Right, so it's the next day. Didn't show a great deal of taking that to bits because we could have just taken it to bits with an angle grinder. Most of it we're not reusing. All the wheel cylinders are gone, pipes, hoses, all of that. Good thing is we didn't find anything else particularly horrific frame-wise or chassis. And nothing. It's, it's fine. It's great. Surface rust. Um, uh, did accidentally melt through the wiring loom, which was just idiocy on my part but we can fix that quite easily. Um, but today we've got stuff, we've got parts, pattern wheel cylinders. Now people say to avoid pattern wheel cylinders for these because they're known to be terrible. And I'm inclined to agree, but the price of pattern wheel cylinders is ridiculously different to OEM ones. I mean, it's, it's mad, literally. It's, you can buy like four sets of those for one set of um, original equipment uh, one. So we're going to try them, see what happens. Worst case scenario, they start leaking in a year. It, it'll be fairly obvious if they do, and we'll bite the bullet and um, and uh, buy some new ones. What I did spend some money on though was an OEM Lockheed master cylinder because that was an absolute pain to get out, um, and I don't want to be doing it again anytime soon. Basically. Uh, so this was quite expensive, but um, at the end of the day, this is the, the most important part of your braking system in a way, because it's what's creating the pressure. Um, so I've got the more expensive one of those and a new pin linkage because it's all broken off down there. So that's fine. And then some may say this is a cop out, but I see it as sensible. These are pre-made lines. These are Kunifer. They're, um, it's copper nickel alloy. Um, so it's got the, the properties of being easy to work and install like copper but it's stronger, less likely to work hard and crack um, so it makes it a bit better than steel really because steel then rots as well and copper doesn't. Now this is a full set that was made up because I've been looking, I wanted to get a brand new um, you know, bench mounted brake flaring tool because I've got one of those little ones and they're really good for doing stuff on a car but if you're making up loads of lines, it's nice to just have it on a bench and you can just set the first, you know, and do it like that. But while I was looking for that, I mean, those are north of £100 for a decent one. I found this fella on, on eBay, I think it's Classic Car Geek. And he just made a whole set for like 70 odd quid. And it's, they've all got the little, all got a little bit of tape on. And there's a, there's a diagram of where they all go. There you go, Classic Car Geek brake pipes. Morris Minor 1000, 5771, and it shows you where all the bits go, and that's really, uh, that's really rather good, and that was quite like 70 quid, so it just seems sensible, I'm not messing around with flaring brake lines, they're all just there, done with the fittings, ready to go, and tell me where you do it. You know, if I was doing lots of these, I'd buy a brake flaring, flaring tool, because um, otherwise you'd be spending a lot of money on that, but for a one-off, I think that's quite a good idea. So, what we're going to do is start the opposite way to taking them off. I'm going to assemble the brakes, wheel cylinders, shoes, got brand new shoes over there, and um, go from there, get all of the four corners done, and then start running lines. Might actually start the back, because we've got the back lifted up, and um, go, yeah, wheel cylinders, shoes, springs, all that, run the lines, get it back in. We'll make it up again. Let's have a go.
So that's rear and near side set up back on. Springs in behind. Just got to put the uh, handbrake linkage back on there. There you go, it pulls on that. This is all nice and free, which is good. Yeah. As you say, that, that just slots in. I had to tap it in with a hammer um, just a little bit to get it to pop in there, but that was okay. And the rear and the springs that so they hold it to the back plate keep it all in place. So as you can see, they don't take too much really, drums. Um, once you know you can just, you know, just get in there with a screwdriver, leave the stuff about, just make sure your springs are in the right place. And as I said, if you've taken a picture of it before, you'll be all right. And um, it's just that simple. So I'll go and do the other side, and then we'll look at running some lines between these two, get it into that block, and then we'll go from there. Right, so because of how the joyous people at BMC made these, you get the floor up as we've seen before, and there we are, I've just screwed the, the pre-made pipes in. Not bad. That one, this one was slightly too long, so I've had to go up and over the top of the axle a little bit. But we've got a nice swoop on there, which is how it was from factory. And um, straight into that. I must say it's very, very nice actually, very convenient. Um, just put this line on, left that top nut loose. So we screwed it into that end tight first, and then that lets you have a nice... Um, what's the word, you know, gentle, it's not pulling on it, because if you tighten that up and try to turn that, you twist your line and it's all not very nice. So that's the rear brakes hydraulically and mechanically sorted, they're all together. Um, oh, I did also put the, the rubber boots on the back of the, the handbrake lever as well, which I didn't show a minute ago. Um, so now the next thing is going to be this line to the master cylinder. Um, and we're going to need to do that, attach it to the master cylinder, pull the line through before we fully put home the master cylinder under the floor. So, um, right, let the fun continue. So we just had to chisel the, um, this off because that was seized onto the bottom of the pedal. It's the, um, it's the fork that acts on the plunger that uses, that pushes the master cylinder. So what I've done as well now is pulled this pipe through this is the line from the rear, from that flexi hose we looked at a minute ago. I've just pulled it out so we can screw it on to this. It's not tight yet. I need to tighten that up and we can shove this back in. Hopefully line up the plunger with the front of that and put the bolts through from underneath that we had to cut one of them off last time. So um, that is the plan. We shall see if it works. Where's my spanner to tighten this up now? Uh, hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. Make sure all this is good because we never see this one again once this is in it's in the chassis rail all those fittings so you just sort of have to hope you've done it up tight enough there we go. All right. might need the second man on this one but we'll give it a go little bits of rubber mat out of the way come on there we go. All right. And we got to go. Ah, uh, yes. I will see what we need to do now. Possibly shouldn't have put that on first because that's now going to foul on that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Cunning plan. Not quite as cunning as I initially anticipated. But, you know. Oh no, no, we can slide it back. Yes. You know, I'm making this up as I go along, you know that. Make that as short as possible so we can get that all the way back. And that's how that goes into there without squishing that. get the boot over which is completely in the wrong place right there we go do it by finger feel there we go. right 
So after a slight rookie error, it's in. I couldn't get the uh, the sort of the the push rod over the the rubber the rubber boot to stop the stuff getting in. So um, I ended up pulling it out, taking the rubber boot off, and then putting it over the pin first, then putting the pin in, then put it all back down, wind this threaded thing on, and then it's all it's in. It's working with the pedal now, which is good. Um, that's going to obviously need further adjustment once we find out how far it needs to be. And to be honest, I haven't read the book yet. So that pipe's now shooting off backwards. We've now got the one coming out the side ready to have the pipes run to the front brakes. And uh, yeah, now we've got that whole lot run. And this pipe is the one that we just had coming out the back of the master cylinder through the frame and out. Some of it I'm going to have to, especially underneath, put some rubber fuel hose around just to stop it chafing on things, uh, keep it away from sharp edges, as it did come from factory like that. Um, but yeah, that is now master cylinder to rear brakes done. So in a minute we can chuck the drums on and adjust the shoes up, then they get, then that is completely done. We can They're ready for bleeding out nearly. Um, but first we've got to carry on with the front. So. Um, uh, more pipes. This is why it's just it's taking ages, but it's not not too bad. It's quicker now. It's all made up already, which is quite nice. But that does also come with like this pipe is slightly shorter than I'd like, and that one is slightly longer. But this is just someone making them in his house and selling them. So all things considered, really good. Um, let's move on. And for those of you wondering why it's a pain, ignore the hole. That was self-inflicted. Can you see where the, the bolt heads are for the, the master cylinder? No. That's because they're under here. There they are. You see one? There's the other one by that scuff. And uh, yeah, this is the way they come out. So that torsion bar is in the way. The nuts on the back of this bit of box section. Um, and that's where the master cylinder sits inside it. So that's what we had to do, lever this down. Obviously this is for the front suspension. This is like your spring. This is the torsion bar. So we ended up levering it out of the way and wedging one of these as they're readily available in there, up into this sort of lip here. And then we could pull the bolts out. And um, unfortunately this one was, it wasn't coming out. It was sea solid on the back. We tried everything, heat, impact guns, swearing at it. It just wouldn't come off. So I had to uh, angle grinder in there. I think I nipped it a little bit there. But that's okay, we can weld. It's only like a slither, we can weld a, a glob in that and make it look nice. Um, that was a bit of, a, bit of a, a misstep on my part, but I think by that point the anger was getting too high. You know, it's, it kept popping out and yeah, wasn't, wasn't particularly pleased with that. But um, yeah, now the new, as you can see, the new bolts are in, new master cylinders in, in there. And um, we've just bolted up from the outside. It's, uh, we're now taking the front wheels off again. And um, my brother is taking the radiator out. We're taking the radiator out to because we need to replace it anyway. But also it gives a little bit more access down to running the brake line across the front. So it seems like a good time to do it. Um, but first I'm going to need to run from the master cylinder, make a nice bend in that pipe to run it up into the engine bay. Although I might assemble all this first, actually. Put these uh, fronts back together.
Right, so finally, new lines are in, the whole lot's in. That's it. These flexi, don't worry, that has plenty of flex in that. Tried it on full lock in both directions and it's quite nice, got the nice loops in underneath. Now we got that's running. You can see where it's all going. Still need some neating up, neatening up, so don't don't worry, it's fine, calm down. We're uh, it's it's not quite how it's meant to be just yet, it needs a bit of tweaking and some rubber bits still need putting on to stop some chafage, but it's sort of it's there, it's plumbed in, it's all put together. Um, front to back now. Um, my brother took the radiator out, as you've probably seen. Um, putting the new heater valve on, and next thing we need to we need to bleed it. Um, that is the problem I have found now with these pre-made hoses. Is they're either slightly too long or slightly too short. Luckily, it has all worked. But this one, for example, coming up from the master cylinder, I had to root it slightly differently just to use up some of the pipe because it's just uh, just way too long. Uh, but it's fine. It's not. It's not bad. It'll, it'll work, and it's not going to not going to hinder what we're trying to achieve. But that is the, uh, I suppose, the Achilles heel of being lazy and getting someone else to do your brake pipes. Um, but you know, that, it's it's still fine. So next thing is bleed it. I've put some uh, brake fluid in the cylinder, and you've probably seen that I've uh, adjusted the brakes for an initial adjustment. They're going to need doing again. Um, one thing I did notice was the springs, they weren't as tight on these when I put the new shoes on, so I don't know what that is. They did tighten up on about one click of the adjuster, so that's probably okay, but um, we'll see. They're all there. They're not going to fall to bits. Um, yeah, we're going to bleed them out, see what happens. Hopefully, we have brakes. Okie doke. And up. Oh, I wasn't holding it down. Oh, righto. You go down. Yeah. Down. Yep. And up. I think that's the back. Yeah. Oh, that's a spiky plant. What I should have said, this is the one in the corner. What I should have said is um, we also did fill the master cylinder up before we started doing this um, and pumped it just on the ground. We didn't, you know, pre. Um, prime the master cylinder or anything like that. Um, we just left all the bleed nipples open, chucked some fluid in it, and it started pumping it around the system straight away. We had it spurting out of all four corners, but it's a beautifully basic system, so it doesn't take a lot to bleed. Right, front. Thank you, don't front then. Now, oh, let me just get me uh, my pot on. And up, down, up, down, excellent, up, down, and up. That's it, no air bubbles. You can let her go. Hopefully, we got, have we got brakes? Can you press pedal? Yeah. Is this with the top open still, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Oh, she locked up straight away. Nice. Mmm, I have to clean up some bits and see if we've got any leaks. Right. Excellent. Oh, what a mess. Is it still on? Yeah. Here we go. Radiator time. Oh, hold on, hold on. We got to put that bypass hose in first. Uh, oh yes, we Otherwise, do. we'll never get it in before that. That's a good shout. Yeah, let's do that first. Hold on. Think about there. Excuse the pliers, but you know, needs uh, must and all that. I've seen people do all sorts with these because it's obviously not easy to get on. But people, have, people have taken the heads off. I wouldn't do that. Don't take the head off. But we can. Uh, I can't remember how I did it, but I have done it. I think you just have to squash it to all, all hell. 
and then go in. I use this. You can get little um, corrugated ones that collapse, but they don't last quite as well. I'll make this slightly shorter than a proper bit of proper bit of hose, just to have a bit more longevity to it. I wonder if we can get it in, then slide the things on. Then if we do something squishing action, like... Right, this is going to be on and off about 300 times, I apologise. Right. We like. Probably would have resorted in screwdriver action anyway. What do you mean, like sort of... Yeah, sort of like, well actually no, like that. you almost rest it on the side of the pipe. Not on the tip, like actually just on the side and push it back and past. Oh, like that, yeah. yeah I think we'll go in the pipe actually, why not? No, that won't work. Okay, so that didn't work very well. I might make, I might use a double bit of hose because we've now sort of ruined that one. But we were close. Yes, that's on. Oh, there we go. We've only minor injury. All right, where's that little screwdriver? There it is. Where's this guy? It just pokes out one of that hole, the big hole by the pipe, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. Somewhere I've got a new new ho lower hose. Let me have a little look. Now oh, that's in here. Uh, they've got to be half inch. I assume they're just so covered in rust it doesn't fit very well. Because 9 16 is too big. You're going to go in? Or you're just going to swim around? Sounds like it's going in. No, it's not. It's spinning around. Yeah. Right, so, oh, some going somewhere, and that's not all fallen out yet. That's good, it's better than before. Ignore that hose, these need replacing, they're disgusting. Um, but I'll just plonk it on for now to see if we can run it up because we are getting tantalizingly close. Now we've got all the brakes to getting this on the road. So you need to sort out the charging. If this works, we just need it to charge. Oh, and to fix the wiring loom, I melted. Right, that's on, that's on, that's on, nothing's going to fall in. That's just a point. Yeah. It's just a bit of bare wire back there, is that alright? Yeah, that'd be fine, won't turn the lights on or nothing. No, it's, that won't be So, good. no, that won't be live. Cold start, first time in a couple of weeks. Oh. Must do something about that starter motor. Doesn't seem to be, does it? Ah. Can we run out of fuel? Could well have done. Oh, well, there wasn't that much left in the back bottom when we were all using before. No, there wasn't, was there? No. Yeah, I think we ran out of fuel. Oh. <laughs> run out of fuel. So that's it, radiator's in, not leaking, and new heater valve, the heater now works, funnily enough, that was block solid. Those pipes still need doing, but that's all right. That's not the end of the world. Started straight back up once it had some fuel. Still amazed that pump's still working. I'm not sure for how long that will work, but who knows. Let's also put it in gear. It's just in fourth at the moment. Brake pedal staying firm, got no leaks. Yeah, we are very close. What we need now is for it to charge. I'm sure that's not much. That's going to be something to do with that regulator box. I can feel it. Oh, and there's still a blow in the exhaust, but you know, one bit at a time, eh?
So, that is the brakes in their entirety. Um, as I say, we need to neaten it up a bit, put some bits of rubber hose around potential chafe points, and then that is it. I'll need to refix that T-piece down as well. Then I think what I'm going to do is get the rear tyres changed. I do have them, I just never, never did them before. And we are pretty close to having this on the road and in a road legal state. I've got to mend the loom still. Um, I've still got to wait for the V5 to come through because um, that's the ZVLA, that's the logbook to make it officially exist according to the government, um, which it does. It's just, you can type it into the website, it comes up, which is just not, um, not been on the road for such a long time. There's no V5 left or whatever. So that will come through. It's just might take a little while. And then once we've got it charging, we are, we're pretty much ready for the road on this. It's, um, it's going to be coming up soon, I think. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for the suggestions in the last video about length of videos. I think they're, they're going to vary, basically. Um, um, nice to know that we can do a longer one and people appreciate it. That's, that's good. So thank you for your feedback. And I know some people don't like it. Um, but as I say, there is going to be a mixture of both because... Um, uh, I can only do what I've got to film, basically. I, I, I don't do this full time, so I've, I haven't got all the time in the world, sadly, as much as I'd like to. So, thank you very much for watching, and very soon we'll have this on the road. See you in the next one.